if you want the audio in your videos to sound more like this and less like this, then keep watching. Hello, I'm Joe. I love audio and video, but especially audio. And I'm going to show you today how I edit or EQ or post process, post produce, whatever you want to call it, my audio. I do this for podcasts, for YouTube videos, for voiceover work, for anything that involves audio. I have the same process. It's always the same workflow. And I'm going to show you it today. It's my audio recipe. We're going to open Audacity. Audacity is a free program. It's great. It's retro. Look at this interface straight from the 90s or early 2000s. I don't know. But um, it's simple, it's basic, it's easy to use. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the right microphone selected. I'm using my Blue Yeti, so I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to monitor my audio, make sure that it's not peaking past minus 12. It's pretty perfect. So now I know that my levels are good and I'm ready to record. Before I record, I want to tell you that... Actually, let's do this in the recording. Before I hit record, actually, I just want to remind you that you should leave 10 seconds of nothing before you start speaking. I'll explain why. Okay, now that those 10 seconds are up, the reason I do that is to record the noise around me, the background noise, the environment, the surroundings, um, just to help me later when I go to reduce the noise and the background noise in the audio. Also right now I have my fan that's blowing pretty much directly onto my microphone because it's blowing onto me because it's boiling <laughs> where I am right now. Usually when I record audio I go under covers and I sweat it out, I have cushions around me but I wanted to do um, something a bit rogue-like today. Um, also, my computer is pretty loud, pretty close to the microphone. Usually I try to quieten that or move the microphone a bit further away. And I think that is enough audio. Oh, seashells. No, she sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. OK, so I have that audio recorded. I'm going to press Control F. This squeezes it all into a viewable section. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is double click and press Control D. This duplicates the track so that if I mess up, I have a raw file. Let's go to audio track and name it raw. And I'm going to mute that. All right, let's bring up my workflow. Here it is. Yeah, it's ready. The recipe for success here. The first thing I do is noise reduction. So let's just listen to it and see where the noise um, sort of stops. Okay, it's about there. So I'm going to highlight from here to about here. Maybe not right at the beginning because maybe you catch a mouse click or something when I hit record. So just there's fine. And I'm going to click effect and noise reduction. Get noise profile. Double click the track. Press control R. Okay, that effect has been applied. The next effect I use is a plugin. It's called UWA Shock. I'll leave the link to the plugin below. You don't have to use this one, it's totally optional. It doesn't do that much, I just like it. So I'm going to click Effect. I have the plugin installed already, so let's go to You Are Shock. It always gives me this error message. Just click OK. I've set it on A here, not B, not C, not D, but A. And I've set it to about 20% on this slider. Make sure it's enabled, click Apply. It's done. Close this. Let's listen to the original and what we have so far after just two steps. So this is the original. Okay, now that those 10 seconds are up, the reason I do that is... This is the edited. 
Okay, now that those 10 seconds are... Not much difference yet, a little bit less noise, but mm, I'd like less, less noise. So the next thing I'm going to do is a bit of bass and treble. Double click the track, go to effect, go to bass and treble. And I usually have it at this. So about 4.0, then 2.0 on the treble and 0.0, .0 on the output volume. Click apply. And it's done. Um, click close. Be careful. You don't want to click apply more than once on any of these effects. Once it's done, just click close and let's see what that sounds like in comparison to the raw. Okay, now that those ten. Okay, now that those ten seconds are up. Okay, it's just a bit fuller, a bit deeper. That's also what the UR shock does as well. It just gives it a bit more body, as if it were a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon. It's really pretentious. Now I'm gonna add some Spitfish. This is another plugin. Link is in the description. You don't have to use this. It's essentially a de-esser. It cuts out the s -s -s sound. So let's click that. These are my settings. I have it, uh, make sure listen is off, set it to about 8K. These two are off. Soft is on. And then I put sense and depth at about 50% on these um, sliders here. These, whatever you call them, these knobs. And then click apply. It's done. Close it. Now, the Spitfish is especially useful for those S's. That's why I did that She Sells Seashells at the end. So let's listen before and after. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells... The difference isn't massive right now, and uh, you might be thinking that the edited one sounds a bit worse, but that's because we haven't finished um, editing. But that de -er will essentially be taking out those um, screeches of the S as we finish our processing of this audio. So next I'm going to double click and effect normalize. You want to just let it do whatever it wants to do. The default might be minus one or minus two or zero. Just let it do that and make sure the first two boxes are clicked or ticked. Click OK. Now, you'll see that I've got lots of peaks, lots of really sharp points on my audio ear, and I don't want that. This is going to be too loud in someone's ear. So my next effect, double click the track, effect limiter. You want to be careful with this one. Set it to hard limit and zero, zero. Um, here you have to be careful and make sure hold is on 10. So here I'm going to set it to maybe minus seven. Okay, it cut off those peaks and that's looking a little bit better than before. Yeah, so if I press control Z Let's listen to this part especially, and then I'll control Y, redo, and listen again. So here we go. I think that is enough. I think that is enough audio. All right, so hopefully you were able to hear the, the difference there. It's not as in your ears when you um, add a limiter. Now I am going to compress. Now this is one of the most important steps. Effect, compressor again, make sure you have your track selected, double click it. These settings are what you should basically copy. So threshold, minus 20 decibels. Noise floor, minus 40 decibels. Ratio, 3 to 1 or 2 to 1. You can uh, experiment with that. Attack time, 0 0.51 seconds. I want to get 0 0.5, but I can't do it. Can you do it? Let me know in the comments if you manage to get 0 0.5 on this. It seems to only go from, oh, I did it. You hold it and you press the arrow keys. Haha. <laughs> so 0 0.5 on the attack time. I literally just figured that out. And then uh, release time, one second is fine. Make sure these are unticked and press OK. Audio compressed. Um, and after that, I'm probably going to have to do some more noise reduction. But I want to test it, so I'm going to drag this down. Um, let's minimize this for now. I'm going to duplicate this track, double click, control D. 
going to move it above this row. Call this one extra NR, extra noise reduction. Press OK. Again, I'm going to highlight that noise at the beginning. Effect, noise reduction, get noise profile, double click, control R. Now it's done that. So I want to listen to the before my extra noise reduction and after. By the way, to do that, make sure you have these grayed out. So you only listen to the one you want to by just clicking solo. You don't need to click mute, just click solo or double click solo to the one that you need to listen to by itself. Here we go. Okay, now that those 10 seconds are up. Okay, now that those 10 seconds are up, the reason I do that is to... Sounds really good, sounds much better. Let's move it about here and listen to the before and after again. And I think that is enough audio. And I think that is enough audio. Okay, that sounds much better. So I think I'm going to call this one the extra noise reduction, the final, and move it up to the top. Make sure the others are muted. And my audio is ready to export. Um, looking at it, I could have been a bit harsher with my limiter to cut off those extra peaks, but it, it's fine for now. Um, and I think, yeah, it's ready. So let's listen to the before and after. So this is the raw. Okay. What I'll do is I'll switch between the two in real time. So pay attention to which one I'm switching to. Here we go. Okay, now that those 10 seconds are up, the reason I do that is to record the noise around me, the background noise, the environment, the surroundings, um, just to help me later when I go to reduce the noise and the background noise in the audio. Also right now I have my fan that's blowing pretty much directly onto my microphone because it's blowing onto me because it's boiling. <laughs> where I am right now. Usually when I record audio, I go under covers and I sweat it out. I have cushions around me, but I wanted to do um, something a bit rogue-like today. Um, also, my computer is pretty loud, pretty close to the microphone. Usually I try to quieten that or move the microphone a bit further away. And I think that is enough audio. Oh, seashells, no. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So that's it. I'm uh, pretty happy with that. I'm not totally happy, again, because I haven't controlled my environment. Your environment is really important when you record audio. You can't fix everything in post. So, yeah, ideally, you know, I'll turn this fan off now. That's much better. So then we're going to click File, Export, and Export it as whatever you want. I'm going to go for MP3. Um, don't forget to name the file, whatever you want it to be called. Uh, this is going to be called, I guess, um, Audacity Workflow Test Audio. Um, and I have a preset where I have it um, like this. You can copy these settings. I go for 320. Um, kbps rather than a 172 10 because it's just better audio quality and the file size is fine then you save it and it will export you can do all that if you want i just clear press ok and it's done the audio is exported and uh, here it is if you're worried that these tracks are going to show up they're not you don't need to delete them um, and don't forget to save your audacity project as well from time to time control s i didn't do that once in this video bad form. Um, make sure that these tracks are muted, the tracks that you don't want to come through. Make sure your final is the only one that has blue waveform in it. And let's listen to how it sounds. Okay, now that those 10 seconds are up, the reason I do that is to record the noise around me, the background noise, the environment. We don't have to listen to it all. Now, if you're lazy and you don't want to do this sort of long audio, it's not that long processing process, then you can actually do it all in OBS so it processes your audio in real time. If you're interested in doing it the easier way, then don't forget to check my OBS 
audio and video tips and tricks video. The link is in the description and you can see how to use OBS filters for audio. So you can do all those things, the noise reduction, the compressor in real time without having to export the audio and do it um, afterwards. All right. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. It really helps me out. And thanks for stopping by. Cheers.